Okay, so... This is, uh, Wednesday. This is Wednesday the 21st of December. It's the, uh, winter solstice. And, uh, we've got the... We're in the aftermath of the Berlin attack. And apparently we're hearing that things like Schengen are now dead. Uh, if not in technically on paper or whatever, then in practice they're doing lots of extra checks on people across the internal borders of Europe. So that's that's as good as saying it's uh, it's dead at least for the time being. So the thing was, um, we've we've had the the business of. Britain having to go through the um, process that I, I said might be a, a kind of process we didn't have to suffer, uh, just to alert Europe to the fact that it was, um, you know, hating Muslims is not what it's about. It's controlling people crossing your borders, which means checking people out so that you don't just let anyone come in who you don't know the background of. Um, like with your house, or in the old days in the Wild West, people had to hand their guns in. You take sensible precautions, and you take more precautions at difficult times. Uh, so why Britain? Remember, in the past few months, we've had Britain getting told, our Prime Minister, the previous Prime Minister now, David Cameron, was told, uh, we won't really give any concessions. There were maybes handed out to him, but he came back with nothing. Then he felt he needed to have that, have that vote that we now call Brexit. Uh, and the rest is literally history. But that is the UK being used as a battering ram. Uh, why does the UK need to be used as a battering ram when everyone knows there's a problem? Um, I wonder if Angela Merkel who is, as some has pointed out, the last remaining vestige of um, significant Western leaders. Uh, because it looks like, well, Hollande is going to go. Francois Hollande of um, France, because uh, he's not going to stand at the next election. So he's gone. Barack Obama's, or he's as good as gone. Next spring he's gone. Uh, Barack Obama's out. Um, he's done his maximum two terms and in 25 days or something he's gone. Uh, to be replaced by Donald Trump and then the right's getting a bit of a grip and so on and I'm not quite sure why the left feels that it has to leave us as exposed and vulnerable in order that it certifies its credentials as being on the left how does being a soft uh, touch, how does being a soft um, target uh, mean that you're on the left can you be on the left and be a hard target, can't you be on the left and control immigration uh, and, and vet people before they come in I don't see why the two are, are bound up together why does the left have to go around as though it's uh, it's unable to stand up for the citizens in this country um, and, and Merkel seems to have this thing where now that there's an attack in Berlin and it's it, it, she's almost placed herself in a position where She's saying that it's contingent upon whether this attack turns out to be somebody who she may have welcomed in as an asylum seeker and not vetted properly. It's almost contingent on that, whether she decides um, our political future. Well, why do you need to wait for that? Why do you need to wait for a big attack in Berlin before you think? I mean, is it going to take literally Merkel's own family to be mown down by some guy in a truck at some Christmas market before she realises there's a danger? Uh, that is not uh, a policy that you deliberately take. That's a failure of imagination. It's almost like Merkel's unable to put herself in, in other people's shoes. You get the impression that if it was Merkel's family that was run over, there'd be border guards everywhere and, and Schengen would be shot uh, dead right now. So it's as though um, it's a failure of imagination to put herself in other people's shoes. Um, there's a there's a magpie cackle in there. Now I've got a catapult, a crossbow, and stuff, and I could just I could just have a go at shooting it. But it's uh, 
is sat in somebody else's house. Uh, magpies turn out to be quite intelligent birds, but the cackling noise is unbelievable, and they do rip other chicks to pieces, uh, which is the main objection I've got to them. I, I don't like seeing that in, uh, on my front pavement. Um, so why don't I just go out and fire away with stones and stuff every morning? Uh, because somebody else's house. If it was on my own roof, I'd have a shot. But they're not, because they're quite smart. They actually know your face. Um, they'll jump on somebody else's roof. Uh, where, where I'm not going to throw stones all the time. I'm not going to uh, catapult missiles and fire my crossbow and stuff. So... Because I can see there's a danger to somebody else, I can put myself in their shoes. I'm, I'm not gonna um, take that risk. But it's like Merkel can't do that. Merkel's kind of there saying, well, it's, it's, I don't really understand how it feels because it's not me, so I don't think it's that bad. And it's unbelievable. And Britain's been used as a battering ram. We've been made to go through all this pain of um, the preamble before leaving Europe. And we've been made to go through all the motions and say we'll have to have all these negotiations about um, free trade and stuff, which of course, as you know, doesn't mean free trade at all. Free trade agreements are actually about what you won't be allowing in without taxing or putting tariffs on. So it's like a kind of misnomer. Um, and it reminds me of uh, a story that I've written about the gauntlet. And it goes like this. It's the psychology of the gauntlet. A gauntlet is where you have to pass through uh, a, a, a corridor created out of people and they have clubs or weapons that they will attack the person with that tries to pass through. Now, when I was at school, they set up this gauntlet. I don't mean the school did, I mean the boys. And you basically, uh, I don't know how to put this, it's a contradiction in terms because to be one of the crowd and be accepted and not be vilified, you would join the gauntlet. And yet, you deserve to be vilified if you join the gauntlet because you you have shown that you're afraid to pass through it. So that's how the gauntlet grows, you see. It starts with three uh, guys on one side, three guys on another. You only need five or six to do it. Uh, and they, they, they flank this corridor. And then some poor bugger walks along and maybe somebody and their friends, and they have to decide whether they're going to join the gauntlet or walk through it. So it grows and grows because everyone's afraid to go through and get a kick in from six people. Then it becomes eight people. Everyone's afraid to get a kick in from eight people. Then 12 or 15. Eventually, I think by the time I was going to pass through it, it was about 30 people. 30 guys. Um, and I knew what it was. Either I was going to take a kick in or I was going to give a kick in. And so in the end, you make your decision. Are you the kind of... It's psychology. Are you the person who's going to join the gauntlet? Are you the person who's going to be the battering ram? Because once you've bust the gauntlet, once you've kicked a few people and the gauntlet disassembles because it doesn't want to face you anymore, you're the person who's been the battering ram. You took a few kicks, you dished out a few, but you disassembled the gauntlet. Nobody else then has to sweat walking down that corridor whether they'll face the gauntlet or not. It is a, a masterclass, the gauntlet, and setting it up. It is a masterclass in psychology. And Europe rather than realise that it is afraid of this gauntlet, of things it'll have to go through, and afraid to be called racist, or afraid to just stand up to terrorism. And that's not the same as deciding that you hate Muslims. Europe has decided it'll let the UK be the battering ram, and make us exit. And all the while it's changing its policies anyway. So what the heck are we leaving for? Why are we being forced to do this when, the, when, when Europe could have changed? I don't know. It sounds to me like a failure of imagination. We've brought the news home, they didn't like it, so we have to walk away because uh, they say they're not going to change. And yet, how European, they are changing behind our backs without actually admitting to it. So that's not very fair on the UK. Um, people voted to leave because Europe wouldn't give way. Now Europe's giving way on the changes that were asked for. I think it needs serious consideration, and it brings me back to the point I was making. You, you cannot rush through to leave in March, because I bet you by this time next year, after Merkel's gone, and I can't see how she isn't going to be gone, um, as the bad news piles in, uh, with events that are yet to happen, there's, there's no need. 
Europe needs to change, and, and that's not being anti any particular race or group. Surely, I can't believe there aren't people in that race or group who dislike what some people in their name are doing. So those people need to quietly, discreetly tip off the authorities and catch people like the stupid truck driver who, um, or the guy who drove the truck rally, he's not a truck driver, um, as, to, as to where they are and what they're doing. But it's a shame that Britain has to pay the price when really Europe now realises it should have done the changing and we, we shouldn't have had to flag up the news. All those people at the top of Brussels now should be swapped out. Tusk and... Um, Who's the, who's the guy who keeps on turning up? He, he gave the Scottish First Minister a big hug, I forget the guy's name, but all those sort of people need swapped out because they're so divorced from everybody's real life, they won't be in a Christmas market where the truck runs them over. What up? Uh, one more point, I used to make jokes about World War Three. How is that funny? Well, used to say to people, all right, all right, if there's a small dispute about something, some argument in the household, I used to make jokes say don't start World War 3 over it and at work you know you say okay okay you know we'll, we'll do it a different way if you want we'll compromise don't start World War 3 now in reality you have to make jokes about World War 4 because World War 3 is already with us and it probably was ever since 9-11 so the jokes now about World War 4 how can I say it's World War 3 it's all over the world violence could occur anywhere at any time um, it's one ideology against another and I don't mean Muslim Islam I mean the extremists of that ideology that think that they can spread their version of it uh, we're frightened to make people show their faces in case somebody will say it's racist uh, I wouldn't be the only guy I think who's noticed occasionally that there are some what appear to be very big women uh, walking around in full Muslim dress uh, that could be a woman maybe I'm being a little bit insulting but I think there's more than one or two blokes have um, found it convenient uh, to shift around like that and I said this about the guy who was fought, caught for the Paris attacks he could pass for a girl and I, I'm not joking that guy could pass for a girl he looks to me like somebody who literally if you said he was a drag queen I'd believe you so we have to just take sensible steps and realise it's not racist. But not everybody has to adhere to somebody's idea of what's right. We need to be tolerant, but at the same time be sensible. So World War Four jokes I have to make now, because I can't make World War Three jokes, because World War Three is already here. And our kids are, in effect, growing up in it. And it's it's a different kind of war. It's, it's not like one or two. I, I accept that, but it's still World War Three. It's the modern version of World War Three of, of a World War. So, Europe waking up, us used as a battering ram, I don't think that's very fair. Making the UK pay a price when, when Europe knows that it's got to shift ground a bit. And it's the, the psychology of the gauntlet. Uh, the UK has been made to give everyone a kick in so that they realise that the gauntlet should be disassembled and people should work a different way. Maybe that's something we have to go through so that we become the new, the new UK, I don't know. But I think it wasn't necessary. And I think they should have shifted before we left. And that would have saved uh, a lot of heartache for everyone. Now we'll leave, then they'll have to shift ground. And it was unnecessary. So remember the psychology of the gauntlet. Either you stand up to it or you become part of it and it shows what you are. Thanks very much for watching and listening.